Welcome back guys. Moving on to the next section in this unit, we're now going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. So I'm going to jump straight into some examples and I got four written out over here. But before we start then, let's do a little review of adding fractions. So let's say I got 2 over 3 plus uh, 1 over 2. How would I add these two fractions? Well, I have to get a common denominator. What's the common, lowest common denominator between 3 and 2? It's 6. So what did I have to multiply this 3 by to get this 6? I had to multiply it by 2, so I got to multiply the top by 2 as well. So this would be 4 over 6. What did I multiply this 2 by to get this 6? Multiply it by 3, so I got to multiply the top by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Now that we have a common denominator, we can add the numerators. 7 over 6. All right? What if I have something like 4 over 9 plus 2 over 3? What's the lowest common denominator. Actually, you know what? Let's do minus here. What's the lowest common denominator between these two? 9, right? Because 9 goes into 9 one time and 3 goes into 9 three times. You could also multiply these, 9 times 3, which would give you 27, but that's not the lowest common denominator. So what's going to happen is you can do that, but then you're going to have to simplify further at the end. It's just easier to find the lowest common denominator right from the get-go. So 9, 9, so this just stays as 4 over 9, and then here I have to multiply this 3 by 3 to get 9, so I multiply the top by 3 like that, and then you can just subtract 4 minus 6, which is negative 2 over 9. Right, so just a little review of how adding and subtracting fractions works. Um, because that's the same process you're going to be following when you have variables in the denominator. So now moving on to the examples, starting off with number one, we got 2 over x plus 3 over 4. Now in general, when you're adding and subtracting rational expressions, the same steps apply that we went over when we were multiplying and dividing rational expressions or just simplifying them in general. You want to make sure everything is factored. All the examples here, everything is already factored, so we could skip step one for these four examples, but in future examples, we're going to have to go through this first step. So you want to factor everything, then you want to get your restrictions, you want to state your restrictions, from your factors, and that's when the denominator is going to be zero. And then you want to simplify. And this step here, this third step, is going to be a little bit different uh, compared to multiplying and dividing, because in this step we're going to have to find a lowest common denominator, because we're adding and subtracting fractions. So. Starting off with number one, 2 over x plus 3 over 4. We factor. Everything is factored. Then you want to get the restrictions. So notice that here, x cannot equal 0. Because if it's 0, you're going to be dividing by 0. You can't be doing that. And then this 4 here, because it's just a constant by itself, there's no restrictions to get from that. So we're going to have to get a lowest common denominator between these two. And when you're looking at these types of fractions, sometimes you're going to have factors that appear in all the fractions. So for example, notice here how the factor x is in both. And then here, notice how the factor x is in both and the factor y is in both. But sometimes you're going to run into fractions where the factors are totally different. So we got x here, a factor of x, and a factor of y. Same thing here, we have a factor of x and a constant. So when you run into factors that are totally different, there's nothing you, uh, common between them, you have to multiply them to get the lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator between these is 4x. 
I know it sounds a little confusing with my wording, but as you do more examples, it's all going to click in. Basically, these are totally different, x and 4. If this was x and y as well, you would multiply them. So whenever they're totally different, you just multiply them to get the lowest common denominator. The process is a little bit different when you have common factors, and we'll cover that in the second example. So multiplying these, that's the lowest common denominator. So what did we multiply the x by to get 4x? We multiplied it by 4. So we've got to multiply the top by 4. So we would have 8 there. And then this 4, what did we multiply it by to get x? We multiplied it. Or to get 4x, we multiplied it by x. So we multiplied the top by x as well. So we have 3x up there. And then, now that we have a common denominator, we can make it into one fraction. We can add the numerators. Notice the numerators in this case are not like terms. So 8 plus 3x we have to keep separate. That's the answer. That's what it simplifies to. And then that's the restriction. x cannot equal 0. So moving on to the second example, we got 5 over x plus 7 over x squared. So first step, factor. Everything's already factored. Once you factor, you get your restrictions. So what are the restrictions here? Well, notice in both cases, x cannot equal 0 because that would make the denominator 0 in both cases. Okay, so we got the restrictions and now we're going to simplify. So we have to find the lowest common denominator. So we could add these two fractions. Now, Notice how both denominators here contain the factor x. This x is to the power 1, this x is to the power of 2. And when you run into a scenario where both denominators contain the same factor, the lowest common denominator is going to be the factor with the highest exponent. So notice that x squared is the highest exponent. 2 is the highest exponent. So x squared would be the lowest common denominator. So what do we have to multiply x by to get x squared? Well, we have to multiply it by x. So we have to multiply the top by x as well. So that would be 5x. And then x squared... To get x squared, we just multiply it by 1. So we multiply the top by 1, it basically stays the same. And now notice that we have a common denominator, and we can add these two. So 5x plus 7, those are not like terms, so we have to keep them separate. And this is going to be all over x squared. So that is the answer right there, and that's your restriction. All right, so when you have common factors or the same factor in both or in all the denominators, you always take the factor with the highest exponent that goes into the lowest common denominator. So in this case, the higher exponent was 2 versus 1, so it was x squared. Okay, moving on to number 3. First step, factor. Everything is already factored. Second step, state the restrictions. So the denominator can't be zero. So notice x cannot equal zero and y cannot equal zero either. Because either of these, if they're zero, the denominators will be zero, can't be dividing by zero. Now, as in number one, notice x and y, they are totally different factors. So, to get the lowest common denominator, we have to multiply them. So, x squared times y gives us x squared y. So, that's the lowest common denominator. What did we multiply this x squared to get x squared y? We have to multiply it by y, so we've got to multiply the top by y. This here multiplied by x squared, so we multiply the top by x squared like that. So notice we can now add these two fractions. So we'd have 6y plus 2x squared over um, 
x squared y, that lowest common uh, denominator. So we made it into one fraction. Now, something I didn't mention before because it didn't really come up in the previous examples is once you get here, once you have this one fraction, you want to look if you can factor the numerator because sometimes what will happen is you'll be able to factor the numerator and then the numerator and denominator will further simplify. So notice in this case, 6y plus 2x squared, what can we take out of both of those terms in the numerator? We could take out a 2 from both of them. And we'd be left with 3y plus x squared. This is going to be all over x squared y. And then the restrictions, let me rewrite down here. So in this case, nothing really cancels out. This factor and this factor are not common. This two, there's nothing that could cancel out. There's no number here. But sometimes stuff will be able to cancel out. So you want to be on the lookout for that. So at this step, you always want to factor that uh, simplified numerator that you get because sometimes stuff will cancel out. In this case, it doesn't, but you always want to check for that. Right, so that there is the final answer for number three, and those are the restrictions. Moving on to number four. First step, factor everything. Everything is factored. Second step, state the restrictions. Notice x can't be zero. If x is zero, then both denominators are going to be zero. Can't have that. So x cannot equal zero, and then y cannot equal zero either. So to simplify these, what's going to be the lowest common denominator between both? Well, notice in this case that we have numbers, constants in both denominators. Uh, we didn't have that in the previous example. So we had a constant here, but it was by itself. Here, both denominators have constants. So what you want to do is you want to look at the constants separately first. That's what I do. So uh, irrespective of the variables, so 3 and 4, what's the lowest common denominator between 3 and 4? It's 12. So I always write the lowest common denominator constant first. And then I look at the rest. So notice x squared and x. Both of those have a factor x. This one is x squared, this one is x to the one. If you remember, I told you over here, when you have a common factor in both, you always take the one with the highest exponent. So you got x to the one, x to the two, highest exponent is x to the two. And then notice that we have y to the power one here, and then we have y squared over here. So we got one, we got two. So what's the highest exponent between both? Y squared. So that is the lowest common denominator between both of these. Now, to get 12x squared y squared, what did we have to multiply? I have a bunch of brackets here, so let me rewrite it, 3x squared y. What did we have to multiply this 3x squared y by to get 12x squared y squared? Well, if you want to figure that out algebraically, you can do it by i. Uh, as you get more comfortable, you'll be able to do it more quickly. But initially, I recommend you just take that lowest common denominator and divide it by this to see what you have to multiply it by. So notice that x squares cancel out here. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Then y squared divided by y to the power of 1. You subtract the exponents, so you get y to the power of 1. So just 4y. So we have to multiply this by 4y to get 12x squared y squared. So we multiply the top by 4y as well. So this would be 8y. And then uh, this here, 4xy squared, let me rewrite it. 
what did we have to multiply 4xy squared by to get 12x squared y squared? by 3x. And the way you can get that, you can do 12x squared y squared, that lowest common denominator, divided by the denominator that came before it. So notice the y squares cancel out. x to the power 2 divided by x to the power 1 is just x, and then 12 divided by 4 is 3. That's how I got that 3x. So we have to multiply the top by 3x. So that would be 15x up there. Right, so I know I'm making it seem like a bit of a complex process, but the more questions you do, the more comfortable you get, the quicker this all becomes. And now you can add these. So 8y plus 15x, those are not like terms, so we have to keep them separate. It's going to be all over 12x squared y squared. Okay, and then at this point, what you want to do, you want to check, as I mentioned in example three, if you could factor the numerator further. Notice 8y plus 15x, we can't factor anything out of that. Nothing comes out of 8 and 15, and then y and x are different variables, so there's nothing common. So that there is your final answer. Now, just as a side note, let's say that I had uh, 8y plus 16 x y squared. Let's just pretend that I ended up with that there. Well, you could factor the numerator then. Notice from the numerator we could take out an 8 y because 8 can come out of 8 and 16 and then notice how both of these contain a y. You take out the one with the lowest exponent right, when you're factoring. So in brackets, we'd be left with 1, 8y divided by 8y is 1. And then here we'd be left with 2xy, uh, right? 16xy squared divided by 8y gives us 2xy. And this would be all over 12x squared y squared. And now notice stuff can cancel out. The, because we're multiplying here, this y, and one of these y's cancel out. And then 8 over 12, that simplifies to 2 over 3. So our final answer would be 2, bracket 1 plus 2xy, over 3x squared, and then there's that one y left. In this actual example, we didn't have to do that because the numerator can't be factored, but thought I would write an example of where that can potentially happen and then uh, the repercussions. So just be on the lookout for that. Sometimes you could factor that numerator further. Right, so that there is the final answer for number four. So same general steps as before when we were talking about multiplying and dividing. You factor, state restrictions, and then, uh, and then simplify. And then to simplify when you're adding and subtracting, you've got to find a lowest common denominator first. So that can get a little bit tricky, but in future videos, I'm going to try to do as many different examples as possible, just so you can be aware of the different scenarios.